Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2022, and I'm taking advantage of one of the coolest things um, that this new version has, which is it allows you to run plugins inside of On One. So, uh, as I demoed in my first look video, I can use Luminar as a plugin to On One, which I love because there's great things about both products. I think they complement each other really well. And what I thought I would do here is kind of work, uh, walk through a workflow using the two together. For me, it's the best of both worlds, it's the kind of dreams come true kind of thing, because I can take advantage of the capabilities of On One, which includes some fantastic masking, some great tools. Then I can go to Luminar AI for things that I love to do there. For example, color work, because if you've seen my photos, um, you know I like my colors, and I can do more stuff with color in Luminar AI than I feel like I can do anywhere else. But anyway, they work together great. I'm gonna walk through that. Here's a base photo. It is an unedited raw file. The first thing I need to do is fix some of these verticals. So I'm here in the transform tool and I'm gonna go into Keystone and see if I can fix this to look the way I want it to look. So that usually requires a little bit of swizzling to get these lines set up. And then when you're ready, you hit enter and you're ready to go. There it is. I think those are much straighter. Now I do need to crop and I'm gonna go with a 16 by nine. And um, I'm also gonna pull this in a little tighter on that side and a little tighter on this side. And I'm gonna move it downward a little bit as well. So I think I'm just trying to get this just right. I think something like that looks really good. I'm gonna hit enter. My photo is now ready to edit. Now, having done this here, um, I love the keystone and the transform op uh, options here in On One. There's also an automatic vertical correction in Luminar that I could also take advantage of. I just did it here because that's where I started. And what I wanna do is develop a little bit here first. So I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast, so like low 20s, something like that. I'm gonna take the highlights down like, uh, you know, about 30 or so. Midtones, I'm gonna drop just a tiny bit and shadows, I'm gonna lift just a tiny bit. So, you know, something about like that, not a major move, but just a little bit of swizzling of the light uh, and the adjustments that I made with Transform. So, by the way, this is a Vatican, you probably know that, but I happen to catch it with a pretty nice sunset, but it's gonna look a lot better when I'm finished with it in uh, Luminar AI. However, before I do that, there's a couple of effects and uh, a luminosity mask that I wanna take advantage of here. So, I'm gonna go get some dynamic contrast, and I'm just gonna use the base settings, which is 15 and 20 on medium and large. I'm gonna go into masking, I'm gonna click on luminosity mask, let me show you what that looks like. Here's the thing, I don't want the dynamic contrast in the sky, I want it in all the man-made stuff, so I'm gonna invert, you can see what that does, and now I'm gonna play with levels, and that's gonna allow me to really brighten up the, uh, you know, really condense that black and white and get it kinda, um, exactly the way I want it to look. So let me do that here. Something about like that. And honestly, I mean, that's, I mean, look at the detail. <laughs> it, it honestly, every time I do this and I get these kind of, this automatic mask based on luminosity masking, I'm just kind of floored. So it's a fantastic capability. I'm gonna copy that mask because I'm gonna use it again. Let me turn off the view. So now, as you can see, my dynamic contrast applies to all the stonework, right? The Vatican itself, the pavement, all that. So there it is before and there it is after. Looks cool, gives a little bit of crunch, but I'm not done. I want a little bit more of that crunch. So I'm gonna go HDR look and I'm gonna go into the masking menu and I'm gonna click paste so that the same mask goes in there and it's a little too much. So I'm gonna pull that down to like a 90 or so and pull this down to about a, you know, maybe a 10 or something. I don't know, just all I wanna do is just create a little bit of crunch, a little bit of that HDR look, which I like, you know? I mean, some people don't like it, that's cool. Maybe you pull that down a tiny bit more. I just wanna create a little bit more oomph in that stonework, and I think by doing HDR look and dynamic contrast, it's given me that oomph that I was looking for. So if I turn these two off, and you look at it before, there it is without either one, and then when I add dynamic contrast, a little bit of pop and HDR look, a little bit of pop also adds a little bit of brightness. Okay, so I'm feeling good about this and this is where I wanna take advantage of this amazing plugin capability that I love and trust me, I'm gonna use a lot and that is you go to layer and you go to filters and then in this case, I'm gonna to go to Skyloom software and Luminar AI. We're gonna pop over there and have some fun. Okay, here we are in Luminar AI. You'll notice two things. Number one, there's no catalog. Number two, there's no export menu. That's because it is a plugin. What that means is it's running, this instance is kind of running kind of within on one. So you don't have the ability to save your photo here. 
the only thing you can do is either cancel and go back to on one or hit apply and send your uh, luminar edits back to on one and we'll get to that in a minute when we're finished so just keep in mind the old way in on one was that you would send to an application you could choose luminar ai and then from there you'd have to save it export it and then add it back to the folder that your on one edits are in no longer having to do that it saves you time and effort so here we are and what i want to do i just want to take advantage of some of the powerful templates that i've created for myself and the first one uh, not the first one the one i'm going to use is called golden light i just click to stick that on the photo you can see that there now it's fairly intense it's a lot of color that's okay you know it's not going to uh it's not going to hurt anybody and you can adjust that later and in fact you can adjust it now you could either go into edit and reduce some of the saturation if it's too much or you could go down here and adjust the opacity i'm not going to do either one and that's because you can also adjust the opacity back in on one i'll show you that in a second so i'm here i've applied my template it's got all these color edits that i like i'm pretty excited about it one thing i am gonna know you know what i'm gonna do that later so uh, no, actually, I'll do it now. I'm going to go to Edit. I'm going to go to a Structure AI uh, that is already on. I don't want it. In fact, what I want to do, uh, so I reset that one filter within my template, so you can edit templates, as you probably know. But I think what I want to do is just drag some negative structure into the sky. So I've softened up that sky a little bit, and now I need to go brush it in. It's on Paint, so let me go ahead and do that. I'm just going to make a bigger brush, and I'm going to do this really quickly and then uh, we'll keep going okay bit of an amateur job honestly i'm kind of in a hurry because i'm making a video but regardless i was able to do that i like to do that in luminar works well for me and now that i'm finished with the tool and that's been applied um, that edit within structure now i'm going to hit apply and this is going to send my luminar edit back to on one okay and here we are back in on one with my luminar edit you will notice that i've got a new layer here and that is my luminar edit it comes back as a new layer so if i turn this off that's what i had before i went to luminar and when i turn this back on that's what i have created in luminar and it comes back as a layer so i can always make further adjustments if i want to and the one adjustment i'm going to make right now is I'm going to reduce the opacity of this layer a little bit. So as I pull that down, some of that intensity of the color is going to fade. So, you know, there it is at 100, and you can just adjust it as you see fit. And that's why I said I wasn't going to adjust the opacity of that template in Luminar, simply because I'll just uh, adjust the opacity of the layer here, which accomplishes a very similar thing. So now I've got that, and if I want to, I can go back to here and see my edits down below. So if I click on that photo, you can see there's HDR look, there's dynamic contrast, but I'm going to stay on the layer that I'm on. And what I want to do is add a vignette. Now I could have added a vignette in Luminar as well, and that's the beauty of, you know, somewhat repetitive tools that are done a little bit differently in each app. But regardless, I'm here. I'm going to go ahead and click Add Filter. I'm going to go ahead and stick a vignette on there. And this will be kind of a light vignette. I don't want to go too heavy. Maybe something about like that. Just something kind of soft and easy, but just a little bit of a finale, if you will, to the photo. There it is without the vignette, and there it is with. And that's how I'm using the plugin capability with On One and Luminar. It's a, it's a super powerful addition to On One. I'm super happy about this because in the past it was a lengthier round trip and it took longer and it just required more steps and more work for us as users. Whereas now, I mean, I click a couple of buttons, it goes over, I do my stuff, I click another button, it comes back, and I can still go in and do whatever I need to do. The thing to be aware of is you can't go back into Luminar and further refine these edits. They are, for lack of a better word, kind of built in or baked into this uh, edit at this point, right? So I've now created a layered file here in um, on one. My base layer is my raw file. My next layer is includes my Luminar edits, uh, along with a vignette added on top. And that's it. I mean, that's the full workflow. Super easy, super powerful, super useful to have. I'm really excited about this. So I'll be back. I'll do more workflow examples probably with other apps. And of course, I'll be doing more with Luminar because I do so much with Luminar and I love it. So that's it, really. If you're uh, curious about On122, I'll keep doing more videos about it. I'll be here every week sharing tips, tricks, and that sort of stuff. Thanks for watching, my friends. I appreciate you guys. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next video, and adios.